Five across, so you came in broken down, broken down. And there were chains around us, and by your grace, we are no longer bound, no longer bound. You call me out of the gun, you call me into the light, you call my You know, I was thinking coming here uh, to church today that I am so thankful that the Lord has promised that he is never going to, again to flood the whole earth. Oh my word, it's about time that we build an ark. It's good to see you here dry. It's thankful that we're in a dry place here today. It's good to see you if you're here for the first time. Welcome to Hope. My name is Bob and I'm one of the pastors on staff here at the church and it's just my pleasure to welcome you here to this hour of worship with the Lord. Uh, if you are here for the first time, there's a connect card in the seat back in front of you. If you would fill that out to let us know that you came today, we'd really appreciate that. And if you have anything to communicate to the office or if you have a prayer request you'd like us to know about, please let us know on the connect card. What we do is we collect those during the offering time, which is going to come toward the end of our service today after we celebrate our time of communion together. There is a ton going on in the church. We've got VBS starting tomorrow. We have a student ministry conference uh, the following week. We've got Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University that's going to be starting here. We're going to have that all through the months of July and August. Registration is underway for that. We've got another member at Hope class coming up. So a ton of things going on in the church. I hope you picked this up on your way in. If you didn't, please get one of these at the information desk when you go out today. This is our bulletin. This is one of the primary ways we can communicate everything that's going on in the church. Also, our website is hopechristianchurch.com. On our homepage there, you can sign up for our weekly email newsletter. It's called What's Happening at Hope. 
Also, you can follow us on Facebook, and uh, we, we would just love for you to do either the bulletin or hopechristianchurch.com or what's happening in Hope or our Facebook page, all those kinds of ways to find out what's going on in the church, and I just want to encourage you to do that. Uh, after this service, if some of you could hang out with us, uh, for VBS, we need to get these chairs moved to the sides over here. We stack them 10 high, and it doesn't take too long if we have a lot of people helping us out. If you would consider doing that after this service, we'd, we'd really appreciate it. Hey, let's get back on our feet. I have some thoughts for us as we continue our worship. Let's all stand. You know, the Bible talks about um, giving the Lord a sacrifice of praise. Uh, God wants us to praise him in good times and in rough times, not because he, he needs it, but because we do. Uh, especially when we're going through the trials of life and things aren't going too well for us. And that's going to happen to all of us from time to time. Praise has a way of lightening our hearts. It has a way of connecting us with the Lord. It has a way of reminding us of the, of the amazing God that we serve and all of his wonderful attributes. And on this Father's Day, we worship our heavenly Father, one who loves us so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Uh, we're going to sing about God's love that never fails today. We're going to sing about his grace and his mercy. Uh, we're going to remind ourselves of how much it cost our heavenly Father to save us. Psalm 95 says this. It says, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. We are the people that our God watches over. We are the flock under our God's care. We serve an amazing heavenly Father. It's to him that we lift up our praises today. I hope you came ready to really lift up a song of praise to the Lord. Whether you sing out or whether you just think about his goodness as you're singing and you're hearing others sing around you today. However it is that you want to praise him, we invite you to do that today. Come worship and bow down.
Father, would you burn a passion in our hearts to worship you? Father, would you fill this room with your presence? Give us passion to praise you, God. Give us passion to worship you. Give us passion to surrender.
that's why we're here. We are here to worship you. And when I say here, Lord, it's not just here at Hope Christian Church in this building. That's why we're here on earth. God, you created us in your image. You created us to worship you, to bring you glory, to bring you praise. And Father, forgive us for the times that we don't. Forgive us for those days, those weeks, those months where we're just so busy we forget to stop and spend time in prayer, and spend time in worship and praise, and just being still before you. Lord, we thank you for this time of worship, and Father, as we continue to worship through the study of your word, I pray that you would just open our hearts, our minds, our ears to what you have for us. God, teach us from your word today. We ask and pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. You can have a seat. Well, happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Can we just show our appreciation to our dads today? Dads, we're thankful for you. We praise God for you. And thanks for spending part of your Father's Day here with us. And what we're doing today is we are wrapping up our If Then Sermon series. And in this series, we've been taking a look at some if then statements, some cause and effect statements out of the book of 1 John. And that's what we're going to do today. As well, today we're going to be in 1 John chapter 5. So if you have your Bibles, you can open them up to 1 John chapter 5. If you don't have a Bible, we'd love to give you a Bible. We have some free Bibles at our information desk. So if you need a Bible or anybody you know needs a Bible, feel free to grab one of those. We'll be in 1 John chapter 5. The words will be on the screen behind me. Let's take a look at our text for today. And this is the confidence that we have toward him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And this is the confidence that we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Once again, you can see the if-then format, can't you? This cause and effect this is the confidence that we have toward him. And then here's the cause, here's the if. If we ask anything according to his will, then the effect of that is he will hear us. What's John talking about here? He's talking about prayer, right? And he's saying that if we ask anything according to his will, if we pray according to God's will, that he he hears us. In other words, he answers those prayers. And this seems pretty straightforward and pretty simple, but like many verses in God's word, there are many who have misunderstood and misapplied this verse. What do I mean? Well, how it normally goes is pastors, leaders, teachers, elders, perhaps authors of books will highlight this verse and they'll take a look at this verse and they'll expand on it, preach on it, again, write a book on it or a little Bible study, a devotional on it. And they have a tendency to focus on these two words, ask anything. And we like those words, don't we? And they'll focus on those words and they'll say, see, see what the Bible says. The Bible says that you can ask God for anything. If you need a new Porsche, you can ask God for it. You like that? <laughs> you can ask God for a new Porsche. You need that match, whatever it is. You can just name it. You can claim it and it'll be yours as long as you have enough faith. You see, that's the kicker. you got to have enough faith, enough belief. And if you have enough faith and have enough belief, whatever you ask for will be yours. But if you don't get it, well, that's your fault. Because you didn't have enough faith. You didn't have enough belief. Had you believed harder, had more faith, then you would have gotten whatever you asked for. But you see, the problem with that teaching is that's not what the Bible teaches. And even though those words are in there, ask anything, and they're important words, there's two other words that we need to focus on, and those two words are his will. You see, those two words make all the difference. Because those words tell us that prayer is not some name it and claim it and it's yours transaction between you and God. Those two words also tell us that it's not about what we want, it's about what he wants wants. Ask anything according to his will. And you see, this is an amazing promise in God's word. It's not a blank check, which bums some of us out because it would be nice, I suppose, if prayer were a blank check and you could just ask God for anything. He'd be like, okay, we'd probably all get ourselves in a bit of trouble, eh? <laughs> Nobody's laughing at that. <laughs> Everybody's like, ooh, he got me. <laughs> but this still is a wonderful promise. It's a promise that causes questions. You see, because if God will answer prayers and answer whatever prayer we pray according to his will, then that begs the question, well, then how can we pray according to God's will? 
You see, Jesus gives us that answer. He gives us that answer, and John records it in the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Here's what Jesus says. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish. There's that again. And it will be done for you. It's another if-then statement, isn't it? It's another cause and effect. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. What's the cause? If you abide in me and my words abide in you. And I love this word abide. It's the Greek word meno. And this word is translated abide. It can also be translated remain. Uh, But more literally translated, it it means to reside. And I love that, to reside. That's where we get our word residence. I want you to think about your residence right now. Think about your home. Most of us like our homes. Some of you may want to sell your home. There's things you want to fix in your home. but, But for the most part, you like your home. Home is where you feel most comfortable. Home is where you can kick your shoes off, just kind of relax a little bit, although there is some stress that comes in the home, of course. But for the most part, home is a place of safety. It's a place of comfort. Home is where your your heart is. That's a beautiful plaque, isn't it? Home is where your heart is. And what's Jesus saying? If you abide in me, if you reside in me, if you make your home in me, if you're most comfortable and most safe, In me, and if my words, if my word resides in you, takes up permanent residence in you, in your heart, and ask whatever you wish, and it'll be done for you. And why? Why will it be done? Well, because if we reside in God, if we abide in him, if we remain in Jesus and his words remain in us, that's going to change what we pray for, isn't it? See, because the more time we spend with God, the more we're able to discern his will. The more we're able to discern his word. And so our prayers will naturally start to reflect the will of God. So when we answer that question, how can we pray according to God's will? The answer is this, stay in God's word. Stay in God's word. The more you stay in God's word, the more saturated your life becomes with God's word, with God's words, it'll become more saturated with God's will. You begin to understand and discern his will more readily in your life. And this is part of what makes prayer such a powerful thing, right? Because the more time you spend in God's word, the more you begin to pray in his will. And the more you pray in his will, the more of your prayers are answered. And what happens when God answers prayer? Our mind is blown, isn't it? Probably the majority of us, at least some of us, have experienced answered prayer. And it's like the best thing ever. You ever been surprised that God answers your prayer? You pray something and it happens, you're like, what? What? He's real, right? We get surprised, we get shocked. We shouldn't, but we do. And it's one of the most amazing feelings, one of the most amazing ways that we can grow in relationship and faith with Jesus Christ is seeing that answered prayer. It builds us up. And this is the confidence that we have, right? It gives us confidence in who our God is. Church, prayer is a powerful thing, amen? Amen. But, Prayer is also an incredibly frustrating thing. And some of you are like, can you, can you say that in church? Is that, some of you are a little nervous for me, aren't you? Like, ooh, that thunderstorm's coming for him. It's going to zap him with some lightning, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We had a crazy day at church today. Pastor's up there yammering on about prayer, and all of a sudden he starts saying prayer's powerful. And I'm like, amen. And he's like, prayer's confusing. And I was like, what? And then zap. <laughs> God got him, left him in a pile of ashes right there on that stage. No, nah, we didn't clean him up. We figured a cleaning crew and get him up. So, no, nah, we didn't stick around. We went to Denny's. They had that Grand Slam on sale. Girls got to eat, right? I'm sorry. That went on way too long. <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I call her Phyllis. <laughs> no offense to any Phyllises out there. <laughs> Prayer's frustrating. As many of you as have experienced the joy, the power of prayer, you've probably experienced some of the frustration of it. Because how does it often go in our lives? Let's just, let's just come out with it. I don't know, let's say you need a new job. Let's say that you're 
a job you have now, the schedule's just, it's tough on your marriage, it's tough on you, you're not seeing your kids, maybe you're working on Sundays, you can't make it to church, maybe you don't make enough money, and it's not because you've overextended yourselves by any stretch of the imagination, but you've, you just really don't make enough money to pay what you need, and so you pray and ask God for what you would consider to be an honorable thing. Lord, I want to spend more time with my family, and so Lord, I pray, would you give me a new job? And you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and then the answer seems to be no, and then... For the majority of us, we're going, okay, like I get it, that's fine, but how can this not be in your will? Why wouldn't you want this for me, God? Well, maybe your marriage is, is broken if you're married. There's tension between you and your husband or you and your wife and you're praying, God, we want to have a, a God-honoring marriage, we want to have a biblical marriage and we want to honor you, but, and we pray and we pray, but just nothing seems to happen. We're sitting there going, God, why isn't this within your will? Why wouldn't you want my marriage to be healed? Why wouldn't you want us to have kids? We've been trying to have kids for, for many, many years, sometimes decades, and you're not giving us kids. Why wouldn't you want this? Why, isn't this? why are you saying no to this? Or somebody's sick in your family, they get a diagnosis of cancer, or maybe you're sick yourself, and you're praying, God, please heal them. Please. And this seems like a good God-honoring biblical thing, and then it seems like he's saying no, and we're starting to go, why isn't this in your will? I'm not asking for a Ferrari. I'm not asking for a mansion. I'm asking for some healing. Why does God say no? He says yes to some things in our lives. God will you, and he does, and we're like, great. <sighs> Daddy's hot. Pray for something else. Then he says no to other things, and, and let's just take it a level deeper. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, where you're praying for something, and you're praying, and you're praying, and maybe somebody you know is also praying for something, and their prayer gets answered. And maybe you're praying for similar things, and I've had this moment, like, let me just take it a level deeper, where I've been like, hey, uh, God, they're an idiot. Why would you answer their prayer? <laughs> a lot of the underbreath amens in that one. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not alone in, in thinking that. I'm terrible in thinking that, right? I shouldn't think that. But go read Psalm 73. King David is talking about how the wicked prosper. And he's sitting there going, well, why am I doing all this stuff if the wicked are going to prosper? And then he talks about, well, then I go into your sanctuary and I see the future of the wicked. And it's an amazing psalm. It's one that I read almost every day. That's how much of a problem this is for me. <laughs> it is. The power of prayer, but the frustration of prayer, it's real. Why does God say yes to some people in some prayers and no to others? Church, here's the answer. The answer is, I don't know. So good luck. <laughs> I'll be at Denny's with Phyllis if you guys want to. <laughs> I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I knew for you. I wish I could look at you and say, this, this is why you're not having kids. I don't know. This is why your marriage is in shambles. This is why your grown kid has walked away from the Lord and wants And This is why you're not getting that job. This is why you're fine. I wish, I wish I knew. I wish I could tell you this is why. I wish I knew for me. Forget about you guys. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I've got piles of prayers myself. What I would consider to be good, God-honoring biblical prayers that are just no's, a pile of no's. And I'd love to know why. I don't know why. I don't know. But here's what I do know. God is still good even when he says no. God is still good even when he says no. The goodness of God does not ebb and flow based on the answers he gives us to our prayers. He's not more good when he says yes and less good when he says no. And he's kind of mediocrely good if he says maybe or wait or I'm working on it. No, the goodness of God, the promises of God do not change based on how he answers our prayers. He's always good. He's always faithful. He's always merciful. But we know that too, don't we? I mean, intellectually. 
That's why when I put that slide up there and I said, God is still good even when he says no, we're like, amen. Because we know that's true. But it doesn't always feel like God is good, does it? At least it doesn't to me. I've shared with you guys, I don't know, for the last like three and a half years, um, that back in 2016, I was in a dunk tank at the church picnic. And it was actually, I think it was the Thrasher's first Sunday <laughs> here visiting. <laughs> and uh, we were raising money for kids' backpacks. And uh, I got up there and, and somebody hit the button while I was twisted and tore a disc in my back. And it was horrible. Those of you that have back pain, you know, it's just, it's just, it just affects everything. So that happened in November 2016. Henry was born January of 2017. And for the first year and a half of his life, I couldn't even stand and hold him. My legs would go numb. I couldn't stand for longer than 15 minutes. I couldn't walk. This chair is up here because on Sunday mornings, I would just need to sit sometimes because things would stop working. And by God's grace, I'm doing a little bit better. <laughs> Oddly enough, this morning when I woke up, I did that morning stretch and spasmed. So I'm on all kinds of neat stuff right now, uh, which is probably why Phyllis was too long. Now that I think about it, it's a side effect of ibuprofen is uh, <laughs> extended character reenactments. Stay, you got to read the labels, guys. Very important you read the labels. <laughs> I feel good now. <laughs> um, I got God's grace. I've, I've been getting better. Um, but that first year and a half, it was miserable. And I've got a little kid. and I mean, it was to the point where Rachel would be like, I can't wait to take Henry to the zoo. And I'm wondering if I can walk around the zoo. Because uh, it just was no, no progress. And uh, by God's grace, again, he's, he's brought me to a great therapist and he's done a lot of work on me. But that happened in November of 2016. So fast forward a, a year and one month to December of 2017, and I'm in the height of it, just still dealing with all this back pain, can't move. And I get a phone call. I'm here at the church, and I get a phone call from a member here at the church. And uh, this guy says, hey, uh, so my dad's been bleeding in his colon um, for two days straight. And they can't stop the bleeding. And it's looking like he's going to bleed out. And they can't. They're not going to be able to save him. Would you, would you pray and ask God for healing? And I said, yeah. Because I'm a pastor and I kind of have to, right? Um, but in my heart, I'm going, this is not going to do any good. Because I've been praying for healing for myself for a year now, 13 months and God is either saying no or he's not hearing me. And either one of those are terrible. I don't, care, I don't care for either one of those. And so he's like, will you pray for healing for my dad? And in my heart, I said, I don't want to because it's going to be pointless and my prayers have no power. But my words were like, absolutely, brother. And so I prayed. One of the shortest prayers I've ever prayed. Because I couldn't seem to muster any good words. Because as I'm praying, my heart is wrestling with the fact that, okay, God, I know you're not going to do anything anyways because my words are clearly falling on deaf ears. And so I pray for this guy, and I say, Lord, we just boldly ask that you stop the bleeding. Stop it right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. And I prayed it all the while thinking this is not going to do anything. So you guys are going to go find another church. <laughs> Hang up the phone. My email's open. Church, no less than a minute goes by and I get an email. I still have this email. I've archived it. And the email was from the very guy that I just hung up the phone with. And he said, the moment we hung up the phone, I got a phone call that the bleeding stopped. Ibuprofen. <laughs> this is one of the most pivotal moments of my entire faith walk with the Lord. Because what I felt the Lord saying, and I don't know if he was saying this, but it just kind of seems like him and the way he works with me. He was saying, hey, bud, I hear you. I can hear you just fine. The answer is just no for you. Because it was the best thing for you to hear no. But it was the best thing for him to stop bleeding. I got up off my chair, <laughs> made my way down to the ground, knowing that I may not get off the ground. 
and just wept. Because God is still good even when he says no. But it doesn't always feel like he's good. And I was in a state in my faith where I knew intellectually he was good. But it just didn't feel like it. But the goodness of God does not ebb and flow based on the answers to our prayers. I want to spend a little time reflecting on this. Would you close your eyes if you would, please? For many of us, the moment I started talking about unanswered prayer, and I know God always answers our prayer. It's a yes, a no, a wait, a maybe. But we're talking about when he says no here. I know that there are many of us that, just like me, have piles of prayers that God has said no to. Whatever it is. And as we were talking about these things, you perhaps were thinking about some of those prayers. Hoping that when I said, here's the answer, that I actually had an answer. And you may be tempted in this moment of reflection, in this moment of meditation to pray for those things again and ask God maybe in a new way, in a better way, in a way that somehow depends on you. But you see, it doesn't depend on you. It depends on his will. So here's what I want to encourage you to do, if you would. I want to encourage you to spend these next few minutes focusing on God's goodness. See, God said no to you, but he's said a lot of yeses. Maybe you do have a residence. Maybe you do have a home. That's God's goodness. If you have a job, that's God's goodness. If you have a family, that's God's goodness. Even if you don't have a family, that's God's goodness. You've got clothes on your back, that's God's goodness. You've got shoes on your feet, God's goodness. You've got clean water to drink, God's goodness. You've got a beautiful church. It's God's goodness. You've got the very word of God. That's his goodness. And you have a savior, Jesus Christ, who paid the penalty for your sins. That is God's goodness. Let's spend the next few minutes focusing on God's goodness. And then we'll move into a time of communion. time of communion. I want to ask you to keep your eyes closed and stay in a spirit of reflection and meditation, if you will. If you're serving communion, you can head to the back. Thank you for doing so. I don't think there's any argument that the greatest display of God's goodness in our life is the fact that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come to earth, to live in the form of a man, to live a holy, sinless, blameless life, and then to sacrifice that life on a cross. I don't think there's any doubt 
that is God's goodness on full display. And there's this well-known section of scripture in Luke chapter 22 where Jesus is in a garden called Gethsemane and he's praying to the Father. And here's what Jesus prays. He says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. What's Jesus doing here? Jesus is giving us the perfect example of how to pray. Praying according to God's will. It's precisely what we've talked about. And most of us, when we hear this verse, or if we're familiar with this verse, we go, see, this is amazing. Look how amazing Jesus is. He gives us the perfect example of how to pray. Pray and say, not my will, but your will be done. And many of us will use that in our prayers. And although it's great to focus on that, and although that is an absolutely perfect example of what we should be doing, I want to draw your attention to something else. You see, the first part of this verse, what does Jesus say? He says, Father, what does Jesus pray? He says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. And then God says, no. No. Jesus prays and God says, no. And do you know what this means for us? This means that we have a savior who understands what it's like to have prayers unanswered. And Jesus' no, the no that Jesus heard led to Jesus' suffering. Some of the greatest suffering that has ever existed came from that no. But the greatest redemption the world has ever seen came from that no. And for many of you, some of the greatest suffering you've experienced or are experiencing is coming from a no. But be encouraged. God will redeem. He will refine you through that no. Our servers are going to come forward. They're going to serve you some bread and some juice. The bread represents the body of Jesus Christ that was broken and nailed to a cross. The blood is represented in the juice. As you take these elements, I encourage you to reflect on God's goodness but reflect on the beauty that we have a Savior who knows exactly what no feels like. After you eat the bread and drink the juice, there's a place for the cup and the seat back in front of you. Then after that, we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings. Eat, drink, and reflect on the goodness of our Lord.
John says, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Jesus says that if we abide in him, in his words, his word abides in us. We can ask whatever we wish and it will be done. It will be done according to his will. My challenge for you this week is twofold. Number one, I want to challenge you to stay in God's word. I could probably challenge that every week and probably the majority of us could probably receive that that's one of the areas that we often fail at in our walk with the Lord is being diligent in our time of study in God's word, not just zipping through our reading plan or reading the verse of the day, not that those aren't good things, but careful meditation and thought, just even reflecting in God's word. So I want to challenge you to do that. Stay in God's word. The second challenge for you this week is reflect on God's goodness in your quiet times. As you're driving in the car, as you're maybe eating lunch alone at your desk or as you have a moment, maybe even in the chaos, reflect on the goodness of God, on everything that he so richly blessed you with. I'm going to close this in prayer. After I say amen, we're going to have a prayer partner down front. If you have any prayer needs, you can feel free to come forward. Uh, Those of you that are going to stay and break down the chairs after work for VBS, Thank you for doing that. If you wouldn't mind pulling the communion cups out of the chair seat backs uh, before you do that, that way there's not grape juice and broken plastic all over the place. We'd appreciate that as well. But let me close this in prayer and then we'll be dismissed. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for prayer, the gift of prayer. Lord, I thank you for the power of prayer. And I do thank you for the frustration of it as well. Lord, it's a way that you illuminate, uh, at least in my own life, uh, areas where my faith needs to grow and my trust in you needs to grow. Lord, thank you for being good even when you say no. Thank you for being good when you say yes. Thank you for being good all the time. Lord, I pray that you would remind each and every one of us this week to be in your word, and to be in a state of reflection when it comes to your goodness. Holy Spirit, do that, we ask and pray. Father, I pray that you be with us as we go. Lord, fill our hearts with joy as we think about our wonderful, gracious, merciful, just Savior, in whose name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for worshiping with us. Dads, have a wonderful Father's Day and have a great Sunday.